Hello Ash Creek family. Thank you for joining me today for Thursday's devotional. I hope that you're having a good day. I hope you've had a good week. Um, I have been uh, watching the uh, statistics about the coronavirus here in uh, Tarrant County and in Parker County. Uh, it's obvious that uh, things are starting to get a little bit hotter uh, as far as the pandemic goes. Uh, I hope that you are staying well and taking care of yourself and being very careful. I know that we had a new case uh, this week in, here in Azel, so I hope that you will please take care of yourselves uh, during these days. I want to remind you that we will be having church Sunday morning, two services at 9.30, two services at 10.45. If you come to the 9.30 service, uh, everyone is asked to wear mask in that service. In the 10.45 service, masks are optional. And so if you are comfortable in being in a room with people who are wearing masks, you need to come at 9.30. If you would prefer not to wear a mask, then we would ask you to come at 1045. Um, we are looking forward to Sunday. I know that a lot of our people are out of town on summer vacation and um, we miss you and uh, hope that you will return back safely real soon. Be careful while you're out there on vacation and don't, don't get sick. Uh, we are doing everything we can at church to keep people safe and so when you come to church on Sunday morning if you have not been coming the last couple of weeks then maybe you don't know what's different but if you come uh, you will see that we are spacing everyone out um, we're sitting at every other pew uh, on the ends of the pews people are far apart from one another and so I think that we are keeping people as safe as we possibly can. Uh, this week, we will be having the contemporary service on live feed again, like we did last week. And we are hoping that we will have the traditional service on live feed as well, uh, on our website, as well as on Facebook. So, um, we're not exact, we're not completely sure yet about the, the traditional service being live on Sunday. Uh, we're having all of that equipment installed today and tomorrow, and we need to have time to test it and make sure that it works and kind of get trained on it. And so we're hoping to be able to do that on Sunday, but we will find out. If you come on on Sunday looking for the live feed for the traditional service and it's not there, then you'll know that we didn't succeed. But it will be on the next week for sure. And, uh, and, and Sundays will be uh, on Facebook and on our website when it is uploaded if it is not live. So, uh, so that's sort of the news from here. Let me have a prayer. Our Father, we come to you and cry out for your mercy and your grace knowing that you are still with us, knowing that you are watching over us, that, you are, that your plan is still taking shape, even though it's hard for us to see that sometimes. I pray for people who are at home alone, lonely and depressed. And I know that these are difficult days for people who are not uh, comfortable in getting out. And for those who are getting out, I pray that you would protect them and that you would uh, protect uh, the people from uh, this disease. And if they do get it, that you would be with them and bless them and bring healing. We know that there are more people who are testing positive, more people who are in the hospitals. We just ask for your, your mercy. We pray for those who grieve and ask for your comfort. We pray for our country and for the unrest that we've been experiencing, asking for peace and justice. We pray for people around the world, for those who are suffering, who may not have as good a health care as we have. We uh, pray that you would have mercy on them. 
we pray for uh, those who uh, are are sick and are afraid to go to the doctor or to the hospital. We pray that you would find ways to help them. We are so grateful for your blessings, um, even in times that are difficult, knowing that you are with us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the Psalms are a good place to read when, like if you don't have anything else to read, go to the Psalms. The Psalms always have place to bless us and places in every situation in life. And uh, I was reading today Psalm 130. Psalm 130. We don't know the exact, or at least I don't know the exact uh, um, situation in which this psalm was read, but I would suspect uh, that it was probably written while the children of Israel were in exile in Babylon or shortly afterwards, but probably while they are in exile, a time when they were in the depths of despair. Uh, and Psalm 130 says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen waiting for the morning, more than watchmen waiting for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. I was looking at this psalm, and I noticed four things here that speak to uh, us even today, all of these years later. It begins with a stanza of anxiety, where he says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. Uh, people have felt out of their depth for a long time. For a long time and throughout history, there have been people who cry out of the depths of their soul. This psalmist certainly does. He cries out to God and he begs God to hear his voice. When we pray, that's what we're doing. We are pleading with God to hear us. And thankfully, the Bible assures us that even when we are in the depths, God's ears hear our voice and hear our cry. And uh, even when we feel like that no one is listening, we can know that in our anxiety, God knows what we're going through and that he hears our cry and hears our voice. But then, after that cry of anxiety, the psalmist writes another stanza, and it's a stanza of relief. You know, when you are anxious, uh, all you need is a little bit of relief. And the psalmist says, but you, or if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Um, here he says, the Lord does not keep a record of sins. That's a good thing, isn't it? Um, we, he admits that if the Lord did keep a record of our sins, we could not stand up. Uh, the weight and the burden of that would be so great on us that it would burden us down and keep us flat on the ground. Um, but it's, it is important for us to be aware of our sins and to be aware of the things that we do and the things that we don't do and sins of commission and omission and to be ready to repent whenever we need to repent, both as, an indiv as individuals and as a community. There are times when we need to repent. But the good news is this, that in God there is forgiveness. And because of that, we can rejoice and find relief. We Christians, who uh, this psalmist did not have the, the benefit of knowing about Jesus 
because this was written long before Jesus, but we Christians are able to look back at Jesus and what he did for us on the cross and in the resurrection and know for certain about the forgiveness that God provides for us. I'm glad that our record of sins is not kept by God, um, but that in, in the cross our sins are covered, are wiped out, and are forgiven. And so therefore we can breathe a sigh of relief even in our anxiety. But even so, we still live in this world and while we're waiting on the Lord, we need patience. I talked about patience some yesterday. This psalmist talks about it too. He says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in verse six, he says, my soul waits for the Lord. Waiting is hard. Uh, waiting is hard, especially when we're living in this world, when we don't know when things are going to get better. Uh, I was just kind of thinking about that today. I was thinking about when are things going to get better? When can we get back to normal? When can, we, can life be back the way that it was? Or uh, at least to get back to where we don't have to worry about this silly pandemic anymore. And yet, um, we're not the only ones who have ever waited. And as I said yesterday, being able to wait on the Lord is a sign of maturity. And in that, and this psalmist says, it is in his word I put my hope. Hope in the Bible is not wishful thinking. It is confident assurance that what God has begun, he is going to complete. And God's word assures us that God has begun something in our lives and that God has begun something in history to redeem the world and he is going to complete it. Regardless of how in depth we are, regardless of our own anxiety, we can have hope knowing that God is not finished with us yet. And then finally, he talks about this hope again in verse 7 as he writes a stanza about salvation. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Our only hope is in the Lord because it is only in the Lord that we can know that the present is not as good as the future. It is only in the Lord that we know that God is going to complete what he has begun. It is only, it, that, and it is only in the Lord we can put our hope because his love is unfailing. That means that no matter who we are, what we've done, or what the circumstances of the world, God is going to love us uh, unquestionably and unconditionally. And that love brings redemption, brings salvation, and uh, brings a true and complete uh, salvation to all of his people. That word redeem means that God has bought us back. This psalmist didn't know about Jesus, but now looking back through Jesus, we know that it is in him that we have the redemption of our souls and the forgiveness of our sins. And therefore, even though we may be crying out of the depths of our soul for God's mercy, we can have hope because we know that his redemption draws nigh. Well, I guess that'll do it for today. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow about 1.30. It will be Friday, or the last day of the week. I look forward to uh, seeing you then for the daily devotional, and then seeing you on Sunday as we gather again to worship the Lord. I am hoping and praying that one of these days before long, we can begin to have Sunday school again, but we're watching the situation and uh, we will be talking about that more in the next couple two or three weeks, um, and we'll see how that goes. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay well. Those of you who are on vacation, I pray that uh, you will be safe as you travel, and we look forward to having you back. God bless you. Goodbye.